Hello and welcome to another episode of the Scientist Safe Farmer. Today we are going to be fixing the slop in the feeder carriage of a New Holland 273 baler. Let's check it out. So here's the feeder tying carriage of our baler. This is the carriage that sends the feeder tines back and forth. Now what you get with these is some side to side slop like this. And that is not good because if there's excessive slop it can lead to the destruction of this entire feeder carriage. So what you've got is some bearings. There's three sets of bearings I believe. There's one right here. There's another one halfway down here somewhere and there's another one down here. And then there's also some sets of wear blocks. And there's a set of wear blocks right in here. There's another set of wear blocks right over here. Those wear blocks are designed to run and wear against the inside of this track. With time, the wear blocks get too run down, and once they get too worn down, I should say, too worn down, you have to shim them, put shims behind them. The manual states no more than an eighth of inch of play. And so if we move this all the way over, we can see in there, there's probably a good quarter inch between that and between that bearing and the side of this and the wear block is about even with that bearing so we need to shim those wear blocks out so we can about cut that plane yeah, mommy half home, mommy home. Mommy home. mommy's home yeah let's go check it out okay? okay all right bye i'm gonna go with you these are the new holland shims right here these are actually some new old stock shims they're about a sixteenth of an inch thick so to put the shims in there is bolts let me get it for you on the back side of the wear blocks and this is one of the bolt heads right there that's a seven sixteenths inch head so there's going to be two of those bolt heads and so what you want to do is loosen those up just a little bit and this one here i've already got loosened don't know how well we can see it yeah you can see it right along there there's a crack I'm getting a lot of sun glare but see that so I've got that wear block loosened up already and now all you have to do is just take your shim and just drop it in like that and I can force it in the rest of the way with the flathead screwdriver or something and then I'm going to loosen these ones up on this side too, and then see, uh, I'm going to loosen those ones up, drop a shim in, see how it affects my play. But there's my shim. I almost saw the way in right there. I'll just push it down with the flathead screwdriver a little bit. So now I've got the shims entirely in on this side. <clears throat> so if we look at this edge right here, and then move it. We have about a 16th inch worth of play. No more than an eighth of an inch is what the book specifies. Now this is what a 16th inch of play looks like from up the top. So that's pretty good. We don't want it so tight that there's absolutely no play at all, but a 16th is gonna be pretty good. We're well under that eighth inch limit of play. So now I'm gonna go and shim out these blocks down here the same way. I ended up putting two shims on this side and one shim on that side. I think if I did another shim that would be just too much. Down at the other end I ended up putting just one shim on this side. Now I will say that these two bolts here are a lot easier to get to than the bolts behind here. Those are, they're really buried in there is a total pain. So I put one shim here. I didn't shim anything on this side and I get, I'm right at a 16th inch of play there too. Now, if I pull this all the way over on this side and come down to this edge and pull it all the way over too, I've got a fairly even gap along here. And I'm fairly even on this side as well. If I take a tape and measure from the edge of that over to here. <clears throat> I'm at seven eighths there. 
I'm at seven eighths on that side. If I come over here, I'm right at an inch. And if I come down to this side, I'm at about seven eighths. So I'm doing a test run of it now. Let's go out and see how it looks. See, I need a spring on that feeder tine right there. That's still missing a spring. Got to get another one for that. Looks like it's running pretty well. Replace some of those signs in another video. Just got the knife sharpened. All right, I think that's a wrap. We got some shims on there, took, definitely took away a little bit of that clearance. Seems to be running pretty nice and smooth, not super loud like it's knocking when it runs. So I'm pretty happy with what I did today. And uh, I think this is going to be a nice little backup baler. Um, I only paid 1200 bucks for it. And um, I'm, I'm kind of looking forward to getting out in the field and just putting a few bales through it just for kicks and giggles, as much as I do love my 311. Anyway, guys, that's enough of me today. Thanks for watching. Like and subscribe if this material trips your fancy. And I'll see you next time. Happy bailing.